right. This is the Evan Ginsberg Show at VillageConnectionRadio.com. And I am honored to have on the show Bill Hallen, Mad Perry and Shy Perry, a rare father-daughter <laughs> musical team. Uh, I go back to Rufus and Carla Thomas. I cannot think of too many father and daughter musical teams. Yeah, I understand that. Oh, yeah. We definitely have a lot of fun on the road. A lot of miles. A lot of miles. <laughs> a lot of miles. A lot of miles. Speaking of which, right after this show, you're driving 17 hours back to Mississippi. Back to Mississippi. So, wow. so that's really devotion <laughs> and the other, a lot of devotion we, we used yeah. to call that, that road warriors right? yeah we yes. like saying road hogs road hogs <laughs> wow 17 hours yes. and you were just at terror blues which is um a nice little jazz club in greenwich village i've been there many times yes. and um there's not a lot of blues clubs left in New York, unfortunately. B.B. Oh. King's just shut down. Do you know oh, that? Wow. Really? 42nd Street and Times Square. Oh, and, wow. and I'll tell you why. They publicly stated that the rents were so obscene, so high, that they shut down the club. I, wow. I went in there nights. It was packed. <laughs> packed. Wow. That's really uh, amazing, as in strange, to think that your expenses... For a place like that is going towards rent, and that's it. <laughs> well, it's it's except for maybe Wall Street, it's the most famous street in the world, yeah. and the rent has to be you know just ridiculous, astronomical. But I'm talking, they had world class acts, and if you talk about the blues, you know, I saw Bobby Rush there many times. They wow, had guys really? like Buddy Guy there. BB King himself played there, you know, wow. back in the day. Wow. So you know, they had world class acts in there, and. To see them shut down because of rents, you know, it's kind of like a knife in your heart if you love blues when, when these clubs go, you know? That is very disappointing. And yes. I'm glad that Terra Blues is still going. And, uh, you know, it was a great crowd Friday night. And, yeah, they seem like they're going strong and will continue yeah. on. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And um, tell us about some of the upcoming events that you have and you have a new cd and tell, tell us what you have coming up yes i do and i have to say well here is the cd this is the cover it's called brand new day because it's a brand new day for me and brand new cd 11 great songs and it's not out actually we're it's going to be out in about three weeks but i have a pre-order okay that's going to happen next Thursday, August 2nd. So, you know, of course, everything is on Facebook. Make sure you you keep up with us on Facebook and, you know, you'll be able to get this album soon. And we're going to do a few songs yes. off this album. Yes. Live in studio yeah, in yeah. just a bit. Yes. And um, tell us about some of the upcoming gigs that you have. You have, uh, I know you're playing a major festival soon. Uh, yes, that would be the uh, Sunflower Festival uh, there in Clarksdale, Mississippi. But uh, next, uh, this coming Wednesday, we'll be at uh, Morgan Freeman's Club there in uh, Clarksdale, uh, Ground Zero. And we have quite a few others. I can't, well, let me see here. Well, we're, we're I have to say we're pretty busy all the time uh, yes. on the weekends, especially where we're usually gigging. And I have to look at the calendar. All right, 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 right. <laughs> and plus, the one that I'm really waiting on is uh, going to come up in November. We'll be heading down to Brazil. Looking forward to that. Wow. Yes. Wow. And tell us when you speak about the calendar, where they could find it, websites, social media, where they could find out where to see you play. Okay, um, of course, like I said before, you can find us on Facebook, Bill, Howlin' Matt, Perry, and do you want to spell your name? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> H-O-W-L-N-M-A-D-D. So that means I'm twice as mad. Yeah, double D. <laughs> double D. <laughs> yeah. And you can also uh, go on his website, BillHowlin'MattPerry.com. And my... Given name actually is Cheryl Perry, and my website is under my given name, S H A R O Perry, P E R R Y dot com. Of course, you know, like I said before, Facebook, you can find us there, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I try to cover all of them. I'm not quite there with Snapchat yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> and, and the voice you're hearing off camera is Jim Savalli, who is our uh, station owner and engineer. And right. he's had an interesting day today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only as interesting as the people in this room have <laughs> yeah. We've all had an interesting day. That's right. Yeah. It's been quite a day. <laughs> and um, Mr. Perry, when you sing, you remind me very much of Howling Wolf. And uh, oh, wow. Hubert Sumlin was... I wouldn't say a, a friend, but a, an acquaintance that I met many times. Okay. You, you, you but someone, the uh, great guitarist that played with Howling Wolf. Right. And um, he is one of the greatest guitarists you know, you'll ever hear, but the average person person walking down the street would not know the name. Oh, absolutely. So w what's your take on that? <laughs> well, you know, I never met him personally and stuff, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of familiar, well, quite a bit for me you know with his work and stuff like that so what can i say you know yeah. incredible artist Hubert Sumlin. yes he passed yes. a few years back yeah. wow yeah. yeah and um i have friends who are blues players and they just revered him i mean they just held him in the highest esteem and uh you know we were very sad and when he left but right. uh, a great right. great artist and um uh, the Rolling Stones, especially Keith Richards, held him in very high regard also. Oh, that and, is fantastic. Um, a lot of the old rockers, you know, a lot of their roots are in the blues. Yes. I mean, uh, the Stones especially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so <laughs> nice to know how, you know, the blues music, where it started from and how it's influenced the whole world, really. Yes, and absolutely. modern music today... Um, their roots, that's, that's, you know, the, the roots of it, uh, hip hop, R&B. Uh, I like to call myself the great grandchild of the blues. Right. And a lot, of, a lot of songs on my album, I do have some uh, traditional blues. Right. But like I said, it's the great grandchild. And I like to th take things forward. You know, I don't want to sound like somebody that was doing their thing 50 years ago. <laughs> right, right, right. They could be my grandmother. Sure, sure. <laughs> and I'm sure they would advise me to take it further and do my own thing. Absolutely. So that's how I like to think of music as well as an evolving. Sh absolutely. Yeah. And um, there are artists like Blind Boy Paxton. Um, there are various young artists like yourself, Shy, who um, embrace the blues and continue the legacy. And um personally I, I i've said this many many times on this show mm. one of my favorite artists is bobby rush yeah. who mixes <laughs> blues funk r&b yes. everything that's right and, and and many times at the end of his set he'll just sit there with a guitar or a, a monica whatever the case may be mm -hmm. and uh he'll just play some straight blues also i mean right. he, he, you know he's he goes back 50, 60 years, yeah. Bobby Rush. And he understands well, entertainment. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, he's, he's a showman. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, actually, he goes back a little bit farther than that because I've been doing it 58 years and Bobby was out there before me. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what a, what a great, great performer. Yes, indeed. And... Um, I don't think he's ever going to retire. I no. just think he's going to go like BBK. He'll just keep <laughs> going, and one day he'll stop. You know. Well, you know, like I always say, you know, us old blues men don't retire; we just fade away. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's another one I heard. Uh, we don't retire because you know you're talking about blues women too. Yeah, sure. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we don't retire; we just fall out on stage. Yeah. <laughs> well, at, at the very end, BB um, King would would just sit throughout the show, but you know, still a tremendous player, tremendous singer. You know, right? So it, it's it's you know you don't have to um, do somersaults. You know, it, to still when you reach that level of right. respect. Then you know people. People understand. People Absolutely. Understand. Yeah. Absolutely. But um, Bobby Rush, he he has more energy than like a twenty-one year old. <laughs> this guy plays two and a half hours, and it's like the club's pulling him off the stage. He wants to keep going. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> That's Bobby for you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I love that man. I'm telling you. If you know what's ironic, uh, there's a lot of ageism. You always hear about racism, sexism. There's a lot of ageism in the music industry. <laughs> and if, if it were me, and you'd say, who do you want to see Saturday night? I'd say, 
I want to see Bobby Rush or George Clinton or, you know. Right. It's like ages, ages are relevant. Larry Graham. Right. Because they're showmen. Right. They're showmen. Absolutely. You know, it's Absolutely. like if, if some sometimes it, it feels a little like I love jazz. Don't get me wrong. But I saw a jazz act the other day and they just kind of stand there and play. And it's beautiful. And I appreciate the art. But sometimes on a Saturday night, you just want to see a show. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a show, yeah. yeah. And, and I have to say, I think that really applies to uh, me and my dad. Absolutely. You know, the older generation is, is showcasing his thing, and I'm taking it further, you know, Absolutely. showcasing my yes. thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, uh, <laughs> well, they always told me, you know, take it farther than you found it. Right, and it's yeah. a nice blend when we come together. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I just thought of another father-daughter act, the Staple Singers. Ah. Uh, Oh, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I'm that's Staples right. and the Staples singer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Mavis is still out there. Yes, yeah, okay. she is. Yeah, she's yeah. not a kid anymore. She's still out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, great music, great music. Um, so speaking of ageism or age in general, mm -hmm. um, I find it troubling. I, I, I was an educator. I taught kids some 30 years ago, and... Um, they are eliminating, eliminating, cutting a lot of art and music from yes. the schools. Yes. And sometimes having kids, whether it's painting or creating music, this is keeping them off the streets and doing That's something right. positive and channeling energy in a, in a constructive way as opposed to get ready for the test. You know, <laughs> test prep, right, test right. prep, which my, my teacher <laughs> colleagues are always complaining about. They go, three quarters of my energy is test prep, and, uh, you know, keeping the kids under control and clerical instead of actual teaching. Wow, that's a shame. Jim Savalli's wow. wife's a teacher, she'll tell you. Oh, okay. So, wow. um, yeah, so you put a kid in a music class and you put an instrument in his or her hand and, you know, it's magic sometimes. And it, and it could can, save a kid. It yes, could save indeed. a kid. And, uh, you know, I have to say that, uh, you know, I worked... Uh, with uh you know uh after uh after school program for about oh seven years or something like that and uh you know i basically couldn't wait to get there every day you know to uh sit with them and have fun and the whole nine yards in fact one of the students uh his name is chris Stone ingram and uh i gave him the nickname kingfish yeah <laughs> And he's only about 18 now, I think it is, but he's been taking the blues everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yes, there you indeed. Go. Yes, yeah, and indeed. I think that it's a travesty that they're getting rid of certain arts and, and music in, in school because there's so many different ways you can learn. And like you said, it's not about test, test, test. And I, when I think back when I was in high school, I don't think I've used too much geometry and right. <laughs> trigonometry, trigonometry hasn't come into things lately, right? <laughs> look, look. I know how to count my money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. look, I mean, look, I'm, I have friends who are math teachers. You know, everything's important, but don't eliminate music and, and art. If they think that they should think the same way about all, if, if everything is important, you know why would you get rid of certain programs that can be very instrumental in a in a child's life it could prob probably change the course of their life well, and when like you in get the case of kingfish in right. the case of you yeah, well, yeah. right his, his father by uh his father actually won a guitar for him in a crap game when he was in his single digits and look there you go yeah it just changed there everything absolutely <laughs> and when you have a mentor like uh mr perry you know it, it could change a kid's life, yeah, uh, life. absolutely yes, we, yes. Uh, well, one of my you. favorite blues artists is a young kid i don't know if you came across him king solomon hicks tremendous this no, kid's been playing since he's like 12 oh wow. I, I forget the exact number wow. but now he's like 21 22 and he's a polished artist and he <laughs> travels the world he plays all the all the festivals That's wow. great. and yeah. um you know you put an instrument in a kid's hand and um and he's a showman i mean right he, yeah tremendous king solomon hicks Okay. You may be, you know, you, like you said, you put an instrument in the hand, you may be surprised what may happen a little bit later on. <laughs> and and speak, speaking of hands, I tell, I tell parents, take your kid by the hand mm -hmm. and take him or her to a concert, to live music. 
My, my father was a taxi driver, blue collar family, never broke 25 grand in his life. No. Wow. And he would take me to, you know, jazz and R&B shows. And wow. um, when I was a kid and I was just blessed to have seen Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, <laughs> Dizzy Gillespie, wow. uh, Oscar Peterson. I could go on. The Spinners, Nancy Wilson, wow. uh, et cetera, so on. And, and, you know, I mean, absolute, like, the greatest performers of the 20th century. And maybe when I was 12, I didn't quite get it. But at 14, your ears develop. At 15, your ears develop. And you start to say, wow, you know, <laughs> Mel Torme, I didn't get three years ago. Now I get it. I get it, you know. And it's, it's a blessing for a parent to actually take the time. And don't use money as an excuse because in any major city in America, you could go to free concerts every day of the week. A city like New York, from Memorial Day to Labor Day, you know, so understand and search it out. And I'll tell you something you, you may not realize. In the library systems, great musicians will perform. I've seen great wow. blues shows in libraries. Really? Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, so that's you can different. tap into that market. <laughs> wow. Paid gigs with a lot of publicity. I'm not saying you're going to get rich from it, but paid gigs. <laughs> but it's a paid gig. Yeah, yeah. you know. Tap I mean, into the libraries. Yeah, this is how we make our living. So, sure. you know, yes. pay a gig. <laughs> yeah. So I would, I would start with, you're, you're living in Mississippi, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. So you, I would start with the Mississippi library system and then the neighboring states. And, you know, you could even do it like a music, like a concert seminar where, you you know, you're discussing the history of the blues. Right. And be, the, That's the a blues, great idea. The blues play in New York libraries. Yep. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Absolutely. I've seen oh, guys like wow. Felix Cabrera, you know, great, great harp player. Right, yeah, yeah. right. Okay. So wow. um, it's just another another uh, path a different yeah, path another yes. avenue. mix it mix avenue. it with yes. education right you know so it's, you know we do a lot of uh you know uh workshops you know with young kids and stuff well, like go. that yeah and uh well like i said earlier you know it's great and sometimes it's how i well i, I believe it's how people are exposed to things and just because they're young um they i i Everything's about pop music, and sometimes it's how things are marketed, maybe. Oh, yeah. And if, if they're exposed to what they consider cool, you might see a, a shift towards blues, and that's one of our intentions. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You have to bring um, the younger people, younger generation in, so they can learn, they can understand. It's the whole history behind music. Absolutely. Yeah, not, well, not just the top 40. Sure. Yeah. There's a documentary and, and tour going on right now called Take Me to the River. And it's fascinating because they took guys like Bobby Blue Bland and they would put them with young rappers. And, and that it is worked. Cool. It worked. Wow. Yeah. You know, you, you, would, you would think it, it, you know, it wouldn't mesh, but it did. When you see, I, you can't explain music. You would have to see the movie <laughs> see and see the right. interaction. Right. And, um, they're on tour now. Take me to the river, um, and um, it's it's well worth supporting and checking out. They're going to be at Sony Hall in the fall and uh, Westbury Music Fair as well. Oh, that's such it's a, a wonderful major venues, idea. major venues. Wow, yeah, yeah, that's great. So, yeah. uh, and what's interesting is when you have a rapper who has a following, all of a sudden the blues artist who's with the rapper has 300,000 views, 500,000 <laughs> right. views. Right. You know, so you're it's good business. It is. Yes, you're expanding is. your audience. That's right, absolutely. And that's really what it's all about, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you want to reach as many people and ears as possible and hopefully sell some music and yeah. keep them interested. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's almost mandatory for a parent... I realize people are stressed and they're working two jobs, but at some point, take a kid to a jazz show, a blues show, an R&B show, whatever, whatever it may be. Right, and, and right. I, I see, you know, if you watch little, little kids, little kids, like three, four years old at a concert, inevitably, whatever the music is, they're moving to it, they're enjoying it. It's natural. That's, That's right. some of the best times when you see a little kid come in front of you and... Yep. They're dancing, and I'm I'm yeah. watching them. I'm like, you're supposed to be watching. Right. <laughs> you're the entertainment right now. <laughs> and 
if the kid had his or her way, the kid would be watching whoever's on the top of the charts, you know, whoever the hottest rapper is or rock star. But if you take the kid to that blues show or jazz show or R&B show and let the kid experience great music mm-hmm. instead of something where the bar is set low. <laughs> I went, I went, I happen to... Open happen, their world a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I happen to enjoy hip hop and support it. We have rappers on the show all the time. We have one coming on in a few weeks. Oh, great. However, however, um, I went to a uh, show a, a week ago and I, I won't... I won't name the guilty, but (laughs) guy's doing the performance, just him and the DJ. The second song, the DJ plays the same song again. So the rapper goes, the rapper goes, you just played that song. (laughs) And then he actually excuses the guy because the guy's going on vacation tomorrow. So he's like totally unfocused. So then in the middle of the second song, the rapper forgets the lyrics. And he stops like dead like a deer in the headlight. He goes, Cardinal the lyrics. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I grew up on James Brown, Al Green, Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson. I'm like, I'm kind of like the bar is set a little lower, a little lower, you know? <laughs> yeah. you, you guys have seen some amazing acts and yes. great acts and yes. you know what it takes to be, you know, top of the line and in and, and, and the music industry and to see subpar acts uh. i mean i'll go see public enemy tomorrow and it'll be awesome you know <laughs> the words have meaning it's choreographed it's it's dynamic but um you know to to, to watch to watch a dj like not even paying attention playing the wrong song it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just you know kind of cheapens the art yeah. and hip-hop i always say anything done right is an art it's an art i mean you know, even pro wrestling. <laughs> pro wrestling. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and why am I mentioning you. pro wrestling? Mm-hmm. I, I was the associate producer on The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke and the new film 350 Days. And oh, wow. Okay. My dear friend Nikolai Volkov passed today, so I want to devote the show to him. Right. Um, okay. But wrestling could be a circus as presented by WWE, <laughs> or wrestling can be an art, <laughs> you know, depending how it's presented. Right. So right. anything could be an art. But I like that. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, take your kids to see Bill Hallingmead Perry and yes. uh, Shy Perry and yes. Blue Shows. And um, <laughs> now, really, my, I'll never forget when I was a kid, my late father took me to see Eddie Jefferson, who was a jazz vocalist giant, but didn't have the audience he deserved. It was kind of like Lambert Hendrix and Ross, you know, a great. Jazz vocalies, a lot of scat singing, and uh, right, okay. but a tremendous artist, and and I, I just sat there, I was like in awe, just in awe as a kid, <laughs> and, and it's like overnight you go, wow, you know, I love jazz, even though I'm not hearing this on the radio, <laughs> right? You no, know, and it, it could it could really be life changing. Yeah, and it, really it can reach you in certain ways that you know. Well, music has a way of doing that for me anyway. I will play a song over and over, kind of obsessively, if I really like it because it just it yeah. can grab me like that you yes. know they have done studies recently where they're proving that music has a healing effect they'll actually show in the brain through you know modern technology yes <laughs> they'll show you how music <laughs> affects the brain you know i and i read something about that here about they're using what ago. alzheimer's patients wow, wow. The, musicians will go into a nursing home and play a song that the patient remembers from 40, 50, 60 years ago. And all of a sudden, instead of sitting there like in a, in a daze, they're singing, they're dancing, they're interacting. And it's, it's music, music. It, it reaches another part of their brain. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So who are some of your influences? Dan? Me? Both of you. Well, you can go first. Well, you know, it kind of goes back with me. And, uh, you know, uh, Howlin' Wolf, you know, was uh, always somebody that I, you know, I loved his voice. That's what I said. I could hear the influence. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And beyond that, uh, you know, People like Little Milton, you know, who I played uh, backup guitar with for a while, Johnny Taylor, and, you know, folks like that. I saw Johnny Taylor live. He was great. 
Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. I wonder if you were with him. This was around, I would say, 1990-ish. Oh, no, no, I was with him back in the early 1970s. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. it kind of goes back a ways. Right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, I guess my influence is, you know, I would say some of the modern songs today, you know, I, I really like some of the music out today, but some major influences, I, I would have to go back a little bit. Even the 90s, you know, that that was... Well, I'm going to give away my age now. <laughs> but I would take it back even further and say, uh, you know, Tina Turner is very inspiring. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I love uh, Aretha Franklin. Sure. And I think we were talking about this earlier. Coco Taylor is yeah, one yeah, of my Coco favorites. Taylor. Very yeah. unique voice. So yeah. there, there's quite a, yeah. you know, when you love music, it's hard to pinpoint sometimes because... After this interview, I'm going to think about five other people <laughs> that I can be, you know. I'll tell you really somebody nice. great who you may or may not know, Avery Sunshine. Avery Sunshine is an R&B singer. No, She's probably in her mid-40s. She's not a size two. And she is so dynamic and so great. Every time you see her in a club, the club is packed. Wow. A truly independent artist. Just great material. And she tours with her husband. Sometimes it's just her and her husband on stage. Sometimes oh, wow. it's a full band. Oh, right. Tremendous and beautiful music. Just ha- It's like a happy pill. <laughs> Avery, the name is perfect. Avery Sunshine. Yeah. Avery, Avery Sunshine. Avery Sunshine. Wow. And, um, you I, said she was about how old? I would say mid-40s. Mid-40s? Not sure. Yeah, well, you know, Sha said a few minutes ago, you know, she gonna, didn't want to give away her age. Well, I give away, man. I'm only 27. There you go. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. His beard is 27. Right. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I, I find it almost insulting that there are great, great artists out there that don't even have a record contract today. But that's you true. know, like legendary R&B singers because of ageism in the industry. Well, yeah, that's very unfortunate. But in this day and age uh, with the Internet and so many different avenues that are free, you can put your stuff out there yourself. Oh, yeah. And a- as well as if, if you write your own stuff, publish it, publish it, you know, the money, you don't yeah. have to really share <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> too much. So I can, you know, who wouldn't want a, a record deal? But I, I can also see how being an independent can play for, you know, your benefit as well financially as well there's a great yeah. husband wife duo <laughs> r&b uh, kindred family soul uh, they're out of philly also independent artist and they'll do actual jam sessions live on the internet and mm, okay. you know they know how to embrace the technology to uh, get their music out there and a lot of artists today um they're going strictly independent. Keep 100% instead of a, a <laughs> fraction. That's way to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the other side of that is you have to relentlessly promote and relentlessly use the social media. Relentlessly to drive 17 hours for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> interviews and yeah. oh, do yeah. what you have to do to get yourself out there. Yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's not easy. It's, not. It's, um, it's a different side of a difficult coin. Mm-hmm. But, but you're in control. Yes. You know, many times I've I've spoken to artists. Um, I had an in- Edwin Vasquez, whose music is on the uh, opening of our show. He told me that, um, you know, when he was young, he he was he was trying to become a priest, but he was an independent music artist, and they were like, "Sex it up, sex it up." You know, we want you to be like a young sex symbol. And uh, he, uh, you know, so it was priest sex symbol. Yeah, it was kind of. Conflicting, you yeah. know. And, but as an independent artist, his music is very, it's not gospel, but it's very spiritual. It always has a positive message. He certainly won't curse, you know. It's so he could control his art. Oh wow! And okay. um, there are advantages and disadvantages to everything. Right. That's true. Yeah. That's but, absolutely um, true. Got to just keep pumping away. It's uh, it, as far as publicity and. Yeah. And I definitely yeah. have to do better about my YouTube page. I'm going to make sure I post more videos and you'll be able to find all kinds of stuff actually about us online. So, yeah, we mentioned that earlier yeah. with different yeah. sites. And, you know, um, 
what I'm finding with younger audiences is they don't have the same attention span. So sometimes instead of putting a 90 minute concert, put one song. Yeah. Put the killer song down there, <laughs> you know, and hook them in that way. Very true. 30 yeah. seconds to a minute even. Probably yeah, go give, viral. A, give them a taste. Yeah, give them a taste. Cause, yeah. uh, a little teaser. A little teaser. Yeah. They'll love it. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> they will not sit down for that 90 minute, you know, co entire concert. But right. Yeah, right. It's, a, it's a different mentality. Yeah. Different mentality. So speaking of live music, we're going to get a live set in just a few. But um, right Yay. now we're going to play some of your music. Why don't you set it up for us? What, what you, you gave us some MP3s? Uh, yes, and actually uh, two things. Uh, again, my CD, Brand New Day. We're going to do uh, a couple songs off of here. And one of the songs that uh, Jim is going to play like I said before, I'm the great grandchild of the blues. There are some traditional blues songs on here, but this song in particular, they're all my favorite, but this is one of my favorites. Um, it's called, <laughs> it's my favorite favorite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's called My Sweet Baby. And uh, beautiful song, beautiful lyrics. And as well, he has his music featured on. You want to show your shirt? We were sure. wanting to... I'll gladly show it. Bob yeah. Coratorium <laughs> Friends. <laughs> yeah. I would have bought, bought one of those. Yeah. It's a nice shirt. <laughs> and uh, there's actually a, a CD with that title, Don't Let the Devil Ride. Go ahead. Yeah, and it features uh, one of my songs. It's called Willie Mae. And, uh, well, it's been out now, I guess, uh, what, about two months now? About two months. Yeah. He's making the charts. And, yeah, yeah. It was last week it was number three on the Billboard uh, playlist. And it's already been nominated for three different awards and stuff. So <laughs> that is really great. There you go. Congratulations. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations. And you're a Blues Hall of Famer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. So um, is, it, is it a myth or fact that Robert Johnson made a deal to <laughs> sell his soul to the uh -oh. devil? Uh-oh. <laughs> I think you kind of stirred a hornet's nest with him with that one. <laughs> it's a myth. It's a myth. It's a myth. Oh, okay. It's about I mean, practicing. It's about, that's right, absolutely. And uh, it's a great, uh, what, what the, let me see, uh, uh, marketing. Marketing uh, seller, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. But, you know, I've... Uh, told it you know my version of uh, the robert johnson story quite a few times and uh you know just like myself just like any other uh musician or artist out here uh you know in order for you to be great you have to do a lot of practicing and that's what robert did and uh <laughs> and you know as far as talking about selling the soul to the devil well if i'm not mistaken robert died uh, in what was that 1937 he was 1938 young. Yeah, yeah he was real young so I guess and, it didn't work out <laughs> well it didn't work out because yes. I mean you know it seems it would have been me and if I had a chance to make the deal a deal with the devil I think I would ask for a million dollars uh, <laughs> there <you go>. tax <laughs> free there you go tax free uh, absolutely I'll ask for maybe a thousand wishes or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow wow so uh, when we come back, we're going to get a live set, and right. uh, we're looking forward to that. And right now, we're going to hear some cuts from you while we set up. And uh, this is the eclectic mix known as the Evan Ginsberg Show at VillageConnectionRadio.com. We'll be right back, folks. All right. <laughs> Sounds all good? All right. <laughs> wow. You guys are the best sports ever. Oh, thank you. Listen, I got people out there who know me that aren't being as nice as you guys. <laughs> 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 Oh, it was Tom's battle. 
Awesome. You guys are much more relaxed, believe it or not. <laughs> and, uh, I remember this morning. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Still that one coming, I'm sorry to say. back with the Evan Ginsberg show and we are honored to have all the way from Mississippi 17 hours away <laughs> Bill Hallamant Perry and Shy Perry all right thank you yeah all right okay. well you know we're going to talk about the way it, way of blues the way it is in Mississippi I should say the way we do it in Mississippi a one two three I got a story I'm gonna tell Down in Mississippi the blues are doing well Drinking and gambling in the juice all night the catfish and chicken wings, they're out of sight. But that's the way, that's the way, that's the way of the blues. 
That's the way, that's the way, y'all. That's the way of the blues. When you are having this much fun, tell me how can you lose? Oh, tell me, but dig it. From all over the world, the people they come down to Mississippi where the blues was born. We play the blues both day and night. We won't stop, not even for a fight, no. But that's the way, that's the way, that's the way of the blues.
funny documentaries and on TV. Uh-huh. That's why every day I have to say I'm thankful for the blues. Oh, yeah. Let's play it one time. Looking back over my life and the things I've had to do, it was the blues, y'all. The blues that brought me through. Oh, yeah. That's why every day I have to say. I'm thankful for the blues Every day Every day I'm thankful for the blues Every day Every day Every day I'm thankful for the blues Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Yes. Well, if you don't mind, I would really like to do one off my new album. Which one would you day. like to do? Oh, uh, of course, I got to give a plug. Uh, the pre order uh, is coming out <laughs> next Thursday, <laughs> August 2nd. Yes. Uh, well, of course, don't you worry. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't you worry. i 
beginning there. Uh, <laughs> no, well, okay. Well, I guess we're going to go ahead and do this one. We were, talk <laughs> we were talking earlier about uh, evolving the blues and all this. Well, I guess a lot of purists wouldn't call this the blues, but it's the great grandchild of the blues. Yes. So here you go. By myself on my new album. <laughs> So much to see. I can't believe I waited this long to leave. The envy, the pressure, had to be free. Just could have taken no more. It was killing me when I get so lonely. I think about the time they thought they owned me. The trouble in my life was all the solely. My mind is at ease now.
Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, it took my brain a second to compute that. We have some songs. Let me tell you, you got a spell on me. I know, you know, I know, you got a spell on me. I'm gonna say it one more time. Hey, baby, girl, you got a spell on me. Hey, now, woman, let me tell you. You got a spell on me I know you know I know You got a spell on me Now dig it I know you got a mojo And a black cat bone You got me so mixed up I can't even leave home Yeah baby You got a spell on me I know, you know, I know, you got a spell on me. Oh, you yeah, let me play it one more time.
Thank you so much, you guys. you guys. We appreciate this. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> you had it. <laughs> Next, we made a day of it. Yeah, yeah right. we made a day of it. <laughs> well, give them a count. Okay. One, two, three, four.
I guess we're going to get ready to wrap it up. <laughs> oh, that's great. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Well, thank, well, thank you so you. much. Bill Howland, Mad Perry, and Shy Perry. What an honor <laughs> to have you here in studio. What well, an honor to be here. I, thank you. I'd just like to say one thing uh, mm -hmm. from the heart. Um, the blues is you guys driving 17 hours yeah. and having a gig canceled. <laughs> yeah. The blues is uh, Jim Savali, who's in a lot of physical pain, and he's having a surgery in a few days, wow. uh, having every tech difficulty imaginable and still coming through with the show. Yeah. And the blues is yours truly in the middle of this finding out a dear friend has passed and um, still turning it all into something special well, and something you know, positive. Something yeah. positive, yeah. Something absolutely, positive. Right. absolutely. Yeah. And something memorable. How to turn lemons into lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. It's been quite a day. So uh, so we're going to go, we're going to end with them while we're setting up with the second song that they said, if you want to tell us sure, about Sure, tell us about the uh, song. Uh, well, the second part. song, I think, that's yours. Um, Can you tell me the name again? I'm sorry. <laughs> I cannot. Oh, well, God. it's one of his, <laughs> it's one of his songs, and... Uh, it's very good. <laughs> yeah. You'll it'll enjoy it. That's what we're trying to figure out. Oh. It'll be a good one, Eddie. Yeah, it'll it's, be a good one. It's called MP3 number two. That's what's one of that. Well, you know, see, I am the crown prince of Mississippi Duke. And uh, we have historical blues markers uh, there in Mississippi. And among the first ones that was put up, my name was put on nice. put on it for keeping the word juke alive in my song. You know, I'm a crown, I'm a prince without a crown, I should say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I almost said I'm a crown without a prince. <laughs> <laughs> so, one thing is for sure, in Mississippi, the juke joints do be jumping. Uh -huh.
This. And I would like to say one thing. Hi, Mom. Love you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. We're going to hear the music of Bill Alamed Perry in just a second. Yeah, I feel bad. And all this time, we only have covered our dreams. 
I need to have, um, I'm getting my stimulators taken out. Project. All right. All right. So let me know when I'm on. You're on. Okay. I am on. Well, ah! we are on. This is the Evan Ginsberg Show, Village Connection Radio, and we got a few guests coming over. I hope. All right. Well, at the very least, let's see. What, what, what do you want me to do? You want me to turn the fan over? Or what? No, I'm just afraid that mic's not getting me. Okay. You're afraid the mic's not getting me. Okay. How about this? How about if I, uh, yeah, if I do, I do something like this? Beautiful. Okay. All right. Evan Ginsberg Show, we are back. Village Connection Radio, the new location. So, I have some ideas of where we're going to go. Robin Channing, by the way, resident magician slash mentalist. So, you know, 
what kind of thing I do, I people often ask me what what is it that you do? Is it illusion? Is it any reality? What is it that you do? Well, my answer is quite simple. There is the world of illusion, deception, and sleight of hand. Then there's the world of the truly impossible, the unexplained phenomenon, and the mysteries beyond human understanding. And there's a little gray area between them, and that's where I operate. Okay? So I hope that it provides enough of an explanation. All right, I see Evan out in the hall right there. Okay, he says one more minute. All right, so you know what? Right now, I'm just going to improv a few things involving what else? One of my favorite tools, a deck of cards. Okay, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna work this. Okay, so let me just uh, get these uh, get guys out of the way here. Okay, uh, let's see. Let me just put this over here because we have the, the table. Okay, I'm not gonna use the table. I'm just gonna be totally free form over here. So we just gonna get rid of these extraneous cards. Go like this. Go like this. And uh, like this, all right? So we can expect our guests to show up. Okay, they're on the way. All right, they're on the way. Okay. I can just put these over here. And I can just put this over here, all right? So, let's see. Hi! Uh, Welcome back, Shy. How are you doing? It's, Happy to be here. Okay, is, uh, is Bill going to join us at all? Yes, he's oh, he, slowly coming. He is slowly coming. Okay, let him take his time. Okay, let him take his time, all right? And uh, I like I like opening with cards. So, you know what? Uh, let's see. Let me just warm up over here. And oh, as you can see, yes, I I do have a life, by the way. It's just it's just not a social one. Uh, All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Shy. Uh, deck of cards. If you were to name any card you wanted, what would it be? Oh, Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades. Okay, that's a very good choice. It's also a popular one. Okay. Uh -huh. So popular that I tend towards keeping one on top of the deck. Oh, see. Yeah. Oh, see. Yeah, right. Right. Want to do that again? Okay, but don't pick the Ace of Spades next time. Okay. okay. If you want to pick a card, go ahead. Four of clubs. That's funny because this time I got that on top of the deck. Okay. 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 I know, right? I mean, wait, what? She's like, what? what? I know, right? Let's try something a lot more challenging. Give me a much more challenging card. Go ahead. Oh, and by the way, the Jokers are over there, so they're off. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I, I'm not very good with cards. So I'll say Jack of Clubs. Jack of Clubs. Okay, you took your time deciding that one. I like that. I like that. Okay, you took your time deciding that. But you know what? One thing I did with uh, with Bill before was I showed him a completely different card from the one that he picked. I forgot the one he picked, but the one he picked was the Jack of Clubs, wasn't it? <laughs> I know, right? All right. But uh, what I'm about to try next involves both you and Bill. It's a psychokinetic piece. Okay. It's a brand new piece. And uh, it's uh, 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 and, and uh, Bill is uh, is on his way. Well, you know what? Feeling that if Bill is uh, taking too long, Evan, can I ask you to step stand in for Bill? Okay. Okay, I don't know. Go. Evan for. Ginsberg is here. Okay. He's a better singer than me. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's welcome back Evan Ginsberg, the producer of 350 Days. I want to give a shout out. So, associate Bill. producer. Associate producer of 350 Days. All right. The producer's angry at me. Okay. I do want the producer's angry. The associate producer of 350 Days. All right. I recommend seeing that. It is an excellent documentary. Even if you're not into pro wrestling, go see it. So, okay, now we got everybody here. Okay, we got Bill. We got Shy. Yes, come on up. Come on up. All right. We got the entire cast. I guess Bill. I guess Evan. We can see things and monitor the things. Okay, I'll stop. Okay, you know what? No, no, he's not with you. Now, Bill. Pleasure to meet you. Okay. All right. Excellent singing, by the way. Shy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. Notice I didn't touch her hand. <laughs> you see that? I just did this whole childish yank thing. What, what were we on grade school or something? The reason being is that for the purposes of this demonstration, Shy, I am not supposed to touch you. Okay. You see how that works? Well, that's, a good that's just the rules of this demonstration. Nothing, nothing against you. Not, and it has nothing to do with who we might have voted for. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most I get into politics in this show. Thank you very much. But Bill, I am going to use you. Okay. Uh, is it asking too much if you t take the shirt off, if you don't mind? Okay, Wait, because the uh, yeah, just that shirt. Yes, yes, just that. Okay, because so you know, this is a public forum. This is internet TV, internet radio. Therefore, the world is watching. So everything I do must conform to the standards of public decency. <laughs> Having said that, Bill, could you stand up, please? Uh, because, Bill, in a moment, I'm going to touch you in various places on your person. Okay. Uh. You see, that's why I gave the disclaimer, okay? Now, Bill, stand over here. Stand over here, okay? Okay? And, Shai, you get to watch everything from uh, the, the worst from angles. Far. Yeah, from the worst angles. <laughs> now, Bill, uh -huh. in a moment, I'm going to snap my fingers, all right? Okay. You, when I snap my fingers, you close your eyes. Okay. And you won't open your eyes again until I snap my fingers yet again. Okay. All right? Now, Bill. I'm going to touch you on various places on your person. Any place I touch you, on your right side, uh -huh. you raise your right arm. Okay. 
Okay. Any place I touch you on your left side, you raise the left arm. Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay, here we go. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Okay, here, 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 here we go. Here we go. Here we go. you, but afterwards something a lot freakier took place because Shai can fill you in also on those details. Now I'm going to do a segment. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I know, right? That was now I'm going to do right? something with both of you, okay? With both of you. Shai, I need you to stay where you are. Now it's your turn to be the target, all right? Okay. okay. And now it's your turn. You're going to close your eyes. You're going to keep the target. But after I sign my fingers, okay? So, okay, here we go. Condition, condition. Oh, by the way, just so you know, what I'm about to demonstrate Combines elements of Dragon Ball and Blood Sports. <laughs> Preferably the Dim Mach. As far as the Dragon Ball, you Dragon Ball fans out there, you might be tempted to say Kamehameha with what I'm about to do. So go ahead and sing along if you let me. Okay, so here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. Okay, now, Bill, mm -hmm. stand aside, because you were in front of Shai the whole time. Mm -hmm. Bill, mm -hmm. I need you to explain to Shai what I just did. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, pushed you, I pushed you over in front, but then I went through some weird motions, Yes. and I did this knife edge thing, I stopped just short of your chest. Right. Okay, so I didn't actually touch you, right? No, you didn't. Explain what you just felt. I felt... I guess, yeah, come in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> but did you feel anything? Like, like it felt touch? like a little pressure come back. I felt a pressure in Chester, even though Bill was in front of you, yeah. acting as a guard, a barrier. Yeah. That alone is weird. All right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, that, yes, it is. It. And that leads us to the real experiment, what we're about to do. Everything culminates with what I'm about to do now. Because you just saw several examples of, tele, of, of uh, psychokinesis, telekinesis. You're about to see something called Technopathy. You see, that's a little known word. You can fact check me on this one. It's mental influence over technology. And to that end, I have a piece of modern tech. This, an iPad Pro. All right? And uh, yes, I am an app order. <laughs> Guilty as charged, okay? The app we'll be using uh, is this, the camera app. Shai, I need you to stand where you are. Bill, I need your left hand to the bottom of the iPad and your right hand off to the side to hold it. Uh, actually, no, no, just, just, just no. <laughs> Relax, I don't want you to strain yourself. I mean, precious hands. I don't want you to strain. You use your hands for very important functions, especially yes. the guitar, the blues. I don't want you to strain these precious hands of yours. Okay? Can everybody see Shai's image on the screen of this iPad? All right? As a matter of fact, Bill, maybe move a little bit more forward. Okay? Okay? Good? Yeah? You want to get some distance. Okay? So everybody can see Shai's image, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, when photography was first introduced to this world, the ancient people at the time believed that the act of capturing a person's picture was the act of capturing their soul. But we're not going to do this. <laughs> Halloween is several months away, so we'll see if you dodge the ball or not. But we can't agree that the act of capturing a person's image is the act of capturing their essence. And by capturing Shai's essence, we're going to attempt to influence their essence. Now, I have some much more specific instructions for you, Shai. I need your complete cooperation. Okay? In a moment, I will snap my fingers once again, and once again, you will close your eyes and you keep them shut. You won't open your eyes again until I snap my fingers again. And while your eyes are closed, you will be in what's called a state of relaxation. In that state of relaxation, it is silent and still. Silent, meaning you won't say a word whatsoever. I'm sorry, but you won't say it either. <laughs> still, meaning you won't move a muscle whatsoever. Unless instructed otherwise. Silent and still. Yeah, I think this thing is really weighted down. 
Oh, 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 yeah, right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, right. Uh, don't, don't, because the camera's oh. over there. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So good. Good catch, good catch. Silent and still. Oh, and by the way, if you happen to feel anything, like any weird sensations, pressures, whatever, don't react, just make it up a little, okay? Okay. Okay, here we go, here we go. Shy, raise your hand if you felt something touch you. Very good, lower your hand. Shy, with your finger, point to where you felt something touch you. And Shy, raise the number of fingers to indicate how many times you felt something touch you. I was lying in the last one, three. I was going to say, I was lying in the last one. Shy. We have this entire studio, and we've got the recording, the video feed to verify, and of course with Bill, everybody, Bill, you had the best seat in the house, everybody can verify that I did not touch you. Because the real freaky part of this all is that the place where you were touched shy was on your face, on the screen. Of the oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, seriously. Them's the blues, right? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that talking about arts and uh, what's worth watching, what's worth seeing. All right. You, movies, TV, and uh, all that good stuff. So we'll yep. be right back in just a few folks. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it felt like maybe the tip of your finger or a feather or something. And I did feel something over here, but... Yeah, all right. Yeah, I should have said three. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Well, I really love it. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get a
Thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, sir. Whatever you want to do, we're going to finish up your show. It's up to you. Oh, We are back with the Evan Ginsberg Show. The sound checks you just heard are the uh, byproduct of live radio. It's Robin Channing, the uh, mutant mentalist with uh, <laughs> superhuman powers. Yeah, R Randy Unger's show was uh, postponed today due to uh, tech issues, but uh, you know um, they're always talking about superheroes. We, we have Robin Channing here. He's uh, he's got he's got real superpowers. Yeah. And uh, we also have Erica A, media expert, mm. and... With my auditory memory. That's right. The, the, the oh. ever-important question that I always ask when they're on is, what are you watching? Well, right now... Whatever you're I watching, started... I'm probably not watching, okay. but... <laughs> I'm watching things that aren't new right now. Pretty much, I looked at a few new shows, a new show on the CW, um, the, bear, the Burden of Proof. If you Which, put a million dollars in front of me, I couldn't tell you where to find the CW that's or Burden 11, of Proof. That's you know? One, oh, one. that's 11? Okay. Yes. With starring the girl who played Lana Lang on Smallville. She seems to always get a new show on that when show. When I hear CW, I think country western, like music. Okay. And I've been watching a lot of crazy stuff that isn't new. Like the show I always love to quote. Nickelodeon brought it back. And I can't believe I forgot to mention it last time we were on. That Avatar, The Last Airbender, has been airing. <laughs> Okay. And I was like, yeah, I might be the only person watching because no one realizes it's back, but there I, it is, and I'm curious. I missed the first 777 episodes. No, that's what makes it a great show. It only had three seasons, and it finished right then and there, and afterward it actually did something funny. They did a pop-up version, and that's what I'm curious. After it finishes, they're almost done with season three, which is called book okay. three. Are they going to do pop-up version where all the little bubbles come up and they say things? And you don't actually watch the show. You just look at all the fun little details. I have a far more important question for um, Robin Channing. Yes. I, have, I have 77 shares of uh, Disney stock. Is it, is it good right now? <laughs> <laughs> I know. You're excited. I, I would think, intuitively speaking, I think it's pretty good, especially since Disney bought out 20th Century Fox for what is it, 71 or 72 billion dollars in cash and stock there? We always knew it was going to happen. I'm sorry. I've been losing money on Disney for years. It's good I stuck it out. It's finally yes. going to pay well, off, have, huh? That's what being in the stock market's about. You have to ride it up and down. Yeah, yeah well, it's. Um, and the only person who's more excited than a stockholder is a fan person. There, there are certain stocks you ride all the way down, so I'm okay. glad this as, one I did okay. As, as a fan, I see an upswing to all of this. Because Disney, for the past few years, has already owned Star Wars. So we've been getting Star Wars movies, you know. There, there's a great divide. Do we them, need a yeah. new Star Wars movie every six months? Isn't well, it not overkill? Every, no, not every six months. But I think we need to get a resolve. You know, they're trilogies. I know you're a much bigger Star Wars fan than I am, but... Mm -hmm. I think we need a third one. I'm not sure about all these little spin-off side movies. I oh. still I still say to this day <laughs> that the only great Star Wars movie was The Empire Strikes Back. And I love Return of Jedi. Yeah, yeah. The classic trilogy really set the bar for Star Wars movies. And well, the Empire Strikes Back was right. I think that was I think that was the yeah. best of all of them. But it's 
was a different time. There's so much more to compare it to now. Those prequels were brutal. I, I didn't even understand what was going on. I was numb. I was just fighting I, to stay oh away. God, I did. Don't. I can give you the Cliff Notes version. Okay. I just like seeing Peter Cushing and Christopher that. Lee. Peter Cushing, by the way, was digitally recreated in Rogue One. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. You know, Peter Cushing, believe... Peter Cushing right. is doing better work dead than a lot of actors alive. <laughs> Oh, don't encourage them. Let people let rest in peace. That's what I say. P Peter Cushing in his last few movies, even though he's dead, he, he's done better movies than The Rock and a bunch uh, of them. Well, better than The Rock has ever done. That's right. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I was saying, as, as far as Disney's upswing, they've, they've got Star Wars. Now they've got the rest of Marvel, the Marvel Universe back under their belts. And they also, wouldn't that give them control of their only competing animated competitor company? Pretty much, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, they're I mean, gonna yeah. get all the, they're gonna get Anastasia. Are they gonna get all the Shrek movies? I think so. I mean, and I believe yeah. all the of melt the Ice Age meltdown and yeah, all that they're, stuff. They're gonna have it all. So pretty much, yeah, they've Disney, also taken out their yeah. only competitor. They're more Disney excited yeah, than I am. I'm the guy with the stock. No, <laughs> you know? I got some too. Oh, you have well, some too. Well, okay. Well, well, consider the following: Disney already owns Marvel. And Infinity War, what did that gross? Somewhere like two billion dollars or right. something like that, you know. And that's owned by Disney. So they, Disney has the Marvel properties, you know, the, the 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 Avengers and the associated characters, Guardians of the Galaxy, and, and now, now Spider-Man. Okay, and now the rest of the Marvel characters. Now the they X -Men, have all Fantastic the X-Men movies. Wow. What so, is that going to do to Deadpool? That's what I really want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that, that's a, that's, <laughs> that's a real the, question. That's my right big there. concern. Now they're going like... to own Deadpool, so that means they can have all their Marvel characters under one roof. But no, Dead. And... I say it because Deadpool is so risque, so cliche, so not Disney. Cliche. So I, no, I, I he need goes those. And touches, it's not that he's cliche. He makes all the good cliches. He goes there and pokes everything. He, he, can he say attacks it. the cliche plays. He brutalizes them. Exactly. Because he's so meta, this guy. Deadpool. So I, I need those shares to go like Amazon, like uh, through the roof. So um, The time will come. Really? Okay. I'm, I'm believe, really? I believe the time will come because... Um, Ironically, yeah. WWE skyrocketed and uh, I, I loathe most of their product. <laughs> but you're obsessed with their product, something I don't really go near. But you talk nonstop about it. You are the wrestling man. Well... That's Monty and the Pharaoh. Okay. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm yeah. 805 Thursdays. Okay. No, I'm, go I'm on Cooking Channel. I'm much happier with Food Network, Cooking Channel. I still watch those. I'm not sure I understand why celebrities now need to cook, too, but... Well, I think it's to show a different skill set and a different side to themselves, if nothing else, just to show that they're not just the actors that they portray themselves as. I know, but it's like, is it just a ploy to make that? I already have a name. I was uh, on this show, or I was a hip-hop artist, or I'm a figure skater, and I have Olympic medals, and now I'm in the kitchen just for fun. Well, well, why not? I mean, I mean, you got it, it's, <laughs> dancing with the stars is not enough. I mean, you have to have like other venues for them to show other aspects of themselves and their talents and so forth. So, well, that's know. what Celebrity Big Brother was for. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, just more variety the better. So you know. that, that that's what um, that's what sex sex tapes are for. <laughs> <laughs> with oh, celebrity really celebrity celebrity when celebrity they, sex tapes. When yeah, they right. make a channel dedicated to people's sex tapes that have leaked, I'll let you know. There you go. They have every other niche product. Why not? Yeah. Right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, what are we watching? That's the question. Right? That, that's well, the ever ever pressing question with 80,000 channels. I know, right? 80,000 <laughs> channels, and I'm hardly watching any of them. Well, because you're yeah. doing your mentalist magic. I'm busy yeah, watching yeah. five things. Flip, 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 flip. There's all to... You know what I learned, though? You cannot watch Match Game and flip to it. It cannot be your third alternate. Match ultimate. Game? <laughs> yes. Match game. They brought that season. back? Yes. That was like from nineteen seventy two. Yes. Oh. Match game. Okay. ABC. Um it changes nights, usually at ten o'clock. Gene Rayburn, match game. Well Alec Baldwin's Alec Baldwin is hosting. Alec Baldwin doesn't need the paycheck. What's this guy doing hosting game shows? Well, he also was carrying the giant mic for a while. I think he finally got rid of it because he was tripping over it, just to be oh. nostalgic. Mm -hmm. Wow. But unfortunately, that's a show that if you watch, it's really fun. You actually get people, random celebrities, people you recognize. But you can't flip to it because if you miss the actual one word that gets the punchline, hmm. it's not as much fun. 
You 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 have problems that no other human beings have. I've never I've never heard this as an issue before. Mm. <laughs> She's watching five shows at the same time. Right, and Match I'm, Game I'm, can't be in the list of five. You and gotta... I'm watching like twice as much anime at, at the same time. Okay, let's so, discuss yeah. anime. Yes. Yeah, so, I finally got into My Hero uh, Academia. Have I gotten it right? Boku no Hero Academia. That's the Japanese word, but basically it's My Hero Academia as the American title. Okay, so I finally got into that. Finally, okay. Well, people have been telling me about it for years. I've seen it. It's like, what is it, third season? Yeah, third season. I'm following that, too. I like it. I like Midoriya's character arc, following his mentor and yes, hero um, worship All Might. character, All Might, right? And he's finally taking a step in his own direction. Well, don't spoil it for me. I'm still in the first season. He's okay. only figured out all for one. Okay, uh, or is it one for all? Uh, I think it's all for one. Okay, all right, because... Sorry, the, translation, the, English to Japanese, we're going to never <laughs> agree eye to eye. Okay. Jim Savalli and I are, are watching and listening, and we have, like, absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Okay. okay. <laughs> Nor do we particularly care, it's but... It's about a school yeah, where children have I saw have the original Star Wars, Wars <laughs> and that was it. Can you believe yeah, that? I've, I've, seen, all I've seen them all except Solo. Uh, I've never seen Did I love see? Solo, by the way. It's a great... Simple, light-hearted action adventure movie, Solo. You know, okay. it's sort Solo of in the vein of like. Uh, what was uh, the one before Solo? Uh, Rogue One. Rogue One. Yeah, well, I, that I, was good. As I well. liked the last half hour. I thought it was great. I didn't uh, think as a movie in and of itself it was a I masterpiece. I thought it was the Last Jedi, and then it was the Last Rogue Jedi, one. right? Well, well, Rogue One was, was like before. before yeah, Last it, Jedi it, was the last one, yeah, right? The last Jedi was the last yeah, one. the one Last Jedi, the, the last, the last half hour of the Last <laughs> Jedi was great. Uh, okay, I thought the first part had its moments. It was. It, it's just very. So, did you ever get to the animated Star Wars movie? No, not one, and okay. most likely I never will. Fine, then you haven't seen them all. I just watched the seventh season of Homeland, which is tremendous with Claire Showtime Danes. Showtime show. Okay. I love Claire Danes, mm -hmm. and Mandy Patinkin. He, whether he's singing or acting, that guy's <laughs> awesome. As far as Star Wars, I just watched just the live action ones because. The different TV series and the but other But you have to go huh? through the TV series. When you were shushing me, I'm like, I want to know how this goes in when we reviewed it together. Okay, fair enough. But I, I, I'm just I want like to know where to those movies. other Siths and which one's going to... And the Darth Vader and how he's not dead. He is dead. I just got a great idea for a show. What do you think of this, Jim? Jim's the station owner. Fine. We're going to get like you guys and, and Randy Unger talking with great gravitas, great earnestness about shows. And like, and Jim and, I will just, Jim and I will just go like, I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can just actually put the board on autopilot and you can go out and drink. <laughs> Come back an hour later. <laughs> Yeah, and you could just have like what you guys talk about as a soundtrack just that, that just pops up right now. Uh, well, yeah. I'm the person who's watching old stuff and you're watching the anime and I get into anime eventually. I am excited about you're gonna tell me I'm gonna get it wrong, so I'm not even gonna try. Ti uh, attack on Titans. Ah you see you did get it wrong. It's attack, attack on, on Titans. Titans. Titan. Oh. It's a singular. Fine. The, the original title is Shingeki no Kyojin, which more or less translates to Attack on Titan. But if you follow the actual story, it actually means Attack Titan, which is... Uh, uh, attack them all as they come. No, it means it, it represents one of the Titans. It's known as the Attack Titan, Shingeki no Kyojin. Okay, G and I know which Jim one Savali's that is. Jim eyes are rolling in his head already. It's not the My eyes are rolling in his head because yeah, he's yeah, using the S never, at the end. I always add the S at the end, and then you start shrieking, No! And I'm like, okay, I'm going to get it wrong. I think warning ahead of time is fair. Okay, but you didn't tell me ahead of time that this is Yes, I did. I said, I'm going to get it wrong. I already know See, this. Oh, Jim, okay. Jim missed doing Randy's show today, so we're doing it now, right? So, okay, okay. Yes, <laughs> I'm excited season three is coming. I still it's never got season to. Season three is here. It is here. Okay. It is. Season two just came. Uh, episode two of season three just aired today. I'm going to download that. I'm going to watch it. Okay, I have yeah. an important question for everyone in the room, including Jim. If they anno they, they, Moon, they announced know. that they're doing remakes of Enter the Dragon and West what? Side Story. Should well, I put a also, bullet to my head yes, now? That is almost as bad as the idea of completely rebooting and starting over um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and recasting Buffy. I think it, I think in terms of yeah. in terms of great art, um, West Side Story comes before Buffy the Vampire. But I'm just saying, it's the kind of thing where it's like this was a time period. You don't go back and poke it with a stick. Let the West Side Story is from 1960. That's going back even further. I know, but let the original work stay. Well, what I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to adapt it to the new time period and let it see 
how it right should now. spin off then. Yeah. You don't need to recast all the regular cast and put new actors in it. Well, I say let let the dice roll, see what happens, see what they do, and then criticize after. I think that. we need a hip hop version of Maria. I think that would be great. Okay, yo, 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 I just met a girl named Maria. That's right. <laughs> I'm still wrapping my head around the idea of a remake of The Crow. I'm not entirely sure I th- about that. Didn't they cancel I'm that? actually not. Sorry? I think they canceled it. No, no, no. They still they got still Jason haven't... Momoa as cast as that. Uh, I was going to say, it's still sitting in the stewing in, pot. Yeah, it's it's in development hell, I th- from what I understand. Oh, okay. But, I'm know. not as cringe worry about that. I don't know how... I thought, I thought the first Crow was really good, because it was creepy, because you knew the guy playing the dead guy was dead. <laughs> I know, right? That, that was so surreal. I mean, to me, that movie was magnificent. I thought... That's a movie to this day that's near and dear to my heart. I love. I was going to say so it also withstands the test of time better than some movies. Some mm-hmm. of the greatest experiences I ever had in a movie theater was seeing Bruce Lee in the '70s when the movies first came out, with every seat in the movie theater packed. It was like seeing Ali Frazier. I mean, the people <laughs> going out of their minds. Yeah, right. You so know, it's like a Marvel Cinematic movie now. Yeah, right. Well, I, I, I see. Every person is a, totally there, obsessed, ready to go. Yeah, but they're not like screaming and like sheer joy. Like, oh, the, you should see what it's like on opening night. Really? Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, okay. That's it's a, why it's I a compared zoo. it. It's a madhouse. It's, oh my yeah, god. It's, a, it's like a mob scene. Interesting. It's like a it's like a live sporting event. It's really it's yeah. No, it's, it's that, like a, it's like a boy that band That was like the concert. first Rocky movie. <laughs> Seeing like, that in the theaters, yeah. There you go. But yeah. Um, the movies, as far as uh, Marvel, yes, I keep up to date with all the Marvel movies, the cinematic I know. universe. And ones. I've walked away from the Marvel cinematic universe, so you can enjoy. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Bye, Steve. We want to be here. I know. Right. I have not given up on the DC universe yet. Give well, me one or two more movies, maybe I'll be there. Anybody have any questions, anything related to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Go ahead, message yeah, me. Yeah, the, uh, the audience member in the uh, second row, his hand is up. Okay, <laughs> yes, you in the yes. back with the uh, invisible hand. All yeah, right. <laughs> anyway. Um, but uh, DC, I loved what Christopher Nolan did with DC. I what? love it to death. Love it. Okay. Love it. I uh, loved some of it, and then I thought it went too far. Well, you and I have diverged different opinions. views. Divergent opinions. I mean, we I know that just when we discuss Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, don't get me started on Yu-Gi-Oh because Why? I still follow. I follow all of Yu-Gi-Oh because I know. Jim Sa- Jim Savali watches all the Yu-Gi-Oh shows also, right, Jim? Uh-huh. Yu-Gi-Oh. There you yes, go. he's <laughs> sitting over there preparing to duel. He's just okay. preparing to put a gun to his head. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, and I, I I play the card game. I have an app for it on my iPad, and I've collected like five thousand cards thereabouts. So okay, so I'll propose. This is this is an interesting segment. It just dawned on me. You're talking about shows you love, and we're mocking the same shows. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting twist on, on a uh, talk I show. I think we're mocking it half too. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I, there was an anime that I did recommend to you, Evan. Oh, you've it, recommended it was three. A, well, one to Evan in particular. Tiger uh, Mask. Tiger Mask W. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you know there were several Tiger Mask anime shows that took place, like that came out in like the seventies and eighties and so forth, because you know Tiger Mask started as a manga in Japan, like. He doesn't know, know what manga ago. is. I've, yeah. I've defined manga, it. black and white comics from Japan. Oh, okay. I've defined right. it three times. Ah, I'm okay. like, you can't say that. <laughs> yeah. We've got to go back and yeah. backtrack well, call that Well, call space. So, you know, the Tiger Mask. So Tiger Mask is like Charlie Chaplin in black and white. So, yeah, wow. Yeah, Interesting. That, right? All right. But Tiger Mask W, that, that came out like a year or two ago. Me personally, I loved it. And there's like so many, so many references to modern day pro wrestlers and wrestling. I think they actually had... Uh, a, a side character called Boss Man and a, wow. a few other side characters. One guy that looked a lot like The Undertaker. And uh, they well, even had the Blood Glove in there. And wow. they had Naito and uh, Kenny Omega as like cameo characters. Okay, wow. well, anime does represent life. They do try many of the shows to draw in and really represent what's going on. Mm-hmm. Maybe not Pokemon, but mm-hmm. some of the other ones. Maybe yeah. not Naruto. Okay, you're, you're, going, you're going after the, the they're, you're name dropping the mainstream ones, the, the, I know. the popular ones. I'm oh. saying, let's not talk about the mainstream ones, but plenty of them. Uh-huh. Well, um, I, Blue, Blue Lagoon Blake, was that what that was called? Blue Lagoon, I think it's called. Um, yeah, yeah, there was one. That it, one it, was like a true representation, I think, of what life could be. That one actually I liked a lot just to get back to okay. something that wasn't wrestling. <laughs> All right, well, you know, I only brought up Tiger Mask W because that is an anime 
in the in the world of pro wrestling, so to speak. Okay. So, so that I figured, if nothing else, Evan, you would dig that. I'm gonna put that on my to do list for next year, Robin. Okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, there's only a- like anime's very high on my priority I know. list. That's like a. That's because I'm old. That's because I'm old. Well, it's a lot Why easier to be... sit through than yeah. three hours of Raw every week. That's right. A lot Raw is painful too. Somebody wrote online if if. Your current self could talk to your teenage self. What would you tell that person? And I, I said, I would tell that person not to devote Monday nights to Raw for like 30 years. <laughs> I think it depends how long it was since your teenage life. It's been a while. Okay. It's been a while. Uh, anyway, uh, Jim Savali looks like he's lost the will to live, so <laughs> we're going to wrap this segment up. Okay. And, so. Uh, Watch more TV. Broadcast TV, 2457. Most of them are having their season finales, uh, except for ABC, which introduced a few shows, and they're taking them off. Mm -hmm. And if you like this segment, watch Under the Radar. It's returning next Sunday at uh, 1-ish p.m. (laughs) uh, Where we review painful movies. um, Some of them are good. Okay, one out of three. We apologize. Yeah. We apologize to um, Randy Unger and his fourteen guests because things just didn't work out today. But uh, you know, this is like the new math when you book fourteen guests on a one-hour show and you uh, uh-huh. try to interview them in depth. It's uh-huh. a, it's a kind of it, a new. It, it just became like a, a Facebook. Li- I I apologize for that, by the way, because I was the one who opened my big mouth and said, "Let's do Facebook Live instead." So next thing you know, the waiting room became a powwow for the, for the whole thing. Everybody sounded like they were having a good time. <laughs> yeah, it just kind it of was sort of a free for all, except the knife kept getting passed around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. All kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, punishment threats were issued to Randy for all the pain- cringeworthy movies. That except they got angry at me when I used one word profanity when I thought it was the appropriate word for the physical action that was going on. Yeah, well, that was a warranted f bomb at that moment. Yeah, and then there were a few other people who who gave a few warranted f bombs to Randy. So. The best thing I saw on Facebook recently was when one person posted, "I don't understand movie musicals." All of a sudden, they start breaking into song. <laughs> what they saw, Mamma Mia? Uh, whatever it was, uh, and they go, "I just don't understand." Like people don't just break into song, and so I'm like. Well, people don't just break into gunfights or, or kung fu battles or, you know, oh, you or ballroom balls. Room. It's, it's one of those conventions that you just more or less have to accept that that's what's part of that yeah. world. Yeah, I mean, they just it just like whoosh, went right over their head like they uh, didn't grasp it. I yeah, think right. that, the wait, that the waiting room while we were waiting for the audio to come back was one step away from an action movie. Everyone breaking into kung fu. The chairs yeah. were going to go flying. Well, yeah, it was going to break into like the hardcore era of the attitude era of wrestling, you know, with the chairs used to weapons and thumbtacks and so forth you know and let the blood fly it's uh, like it's like in death wish three four you know like everybody's just having shootouts on the street and like nobody notices there's no police you know it's like it's a movie you have to have some suspension of disbelief yeah right it has to be some sort of dramatic build-up and so forth i mean after the first Godzilla movie was like, okay. Oh, I the original like, first Godzilla movie. Gojira, yeah. I finally original. saw that. It's really good. It is. It is yeah, really it's good. really atmospheric. And, and, yeah. and so forth. But then the following ones, especially in the Showa era from like the 60s and so forth, it's just Godzilla and the other giant monsters. But those are the Having ones a monster that... smackdown, destroying buildings along the way. But those are the ones that are iconic. Those are the ones that rear. Those are the ones that me TV have got the rights to all of them. And every week on Saturday night between all the superhero shows re-air because they're just so iconic. That's that's what you think of I'm when not. you think Godzilla. So well, you I, can criticize, but you also I'm not criticizing. I'm just bringing okay. out an observation. I like in the 70s, there was one Godzilla movie where he was doing Kung Fu. That must have been during the Bruce Lee era. <laughs> I guess. I mean, there was this one yeah. where Godzilla did this freaking well, Godzilla gigantic was... drop kick from one yes. end of the... Yeah. The but I'm yeah. saying, Godzilla was so relevant, he got his own cartoon. Dinosaurs always did drop kicks. This is a little known scientific fact. <laughs> Especially if they were dinosaur transformers. That's right. That's right. Anyway, on uh, on that note, <laughs> Jim looks exhausted. It's been one of those days. Uh, hang in there. Jim. He's been here since the crack of dawn. He's he's fiddled with eighty-seven wires. It's been a rough day. Yeah. So uh, should we do that interview, uh, or should we do it a different day? You look beat. Uh, it's up to you. you I, I don't even know. All if you gotta do is hit the button and see if he brings. Okay, we're, we're going to attempt a phone interview from uh, a guest that we uh, tried to reach before. Screen. 
Well, there's still a microphone. I'm not on. You're on microphone. <laughs> He's a magician, but he hasn't grasped the magic of radio yet. It's very complex. He's it's started. microphones. He started it. <laughs> you turned up your phone. Oh. Well, this is uh, live radio, so uh, dead silence oh. is... Hello? Yes, uh, Mr. Simba, this is Evan Ginsberg over at Village we Connection didn't Radio. We either because you were not speaking or because of a bad connection. To <laughs> Hello? Yes, uh, Mr. Simba, this is Evan Ginsberg over at Village Connection Radio. How are you, sir? Hey, hi, how are you? Good, good. Um, I, I apologize for the delay. We had a lot of tech issues earlier in the day. W would you be available to do an interview now? Uh, sure. Uh, how long? I'll let me out the door in a few minutes. Uh, five, ten minutes, whatever works for you. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, <laughs> so... Um, We'll just we'll just jump right in then. Um, Jason yeah. Sim Jason Simber is the founder and executive director of Q Gardens Festival of Cinema, and uh, tell us about the big festival that's coming to Queens this week. Yeah, well, it is a, a ten day event. We're trying to make this an annual thing. Uh, this is our second year. La uh, it's running from August third to the twelfth. Uh, last year we attracted. Uh, 3,000 people over the course of 10 days, and this year we're expecting an even larger crowd. We already have, uh, we already have sold out shows, and, and about three that are very close to being sold out. So, uh, so we are actually, uh, we are really anticipating a huge audience this year and a huge turnout. So we're very excited about that. We have, uh, 110 films selected from over 30 countries that submitted around the world. Um, and uh, we have a little bit of something for everybody. You know, we've got comedy, drama, horror, action. Uh, we have lots of networking and special events. Uh, we have uh, a comedy, a stand-up comedy night. We have a drunken trivia night. We have uh, a karaoke night. Uh, we have a networking at a pool hall night. And, um, and one of the, um, the special screenings that I'm really excited about is this year we have a Midnight Madness, and we have what may be the sickest, most disturbing film that I have ever seen, ever, and I have seen a lot of uh, sick films from the horror fan, and this has to take a cake of all of them. So I'm very excited to see that and see how many people can actually sit through the whole film or how many people walk out. That'll be uh, kind of a, kind of, it's, it's a cruel, like, sense of humor that I have, but I, I will get a kick out of that to see who's still. Is it, is who. it sick but, of it? Um, but yeah, it? that is, uh, that, that's our festival, and we, and we kick it all off this coming Tuesday, uh, July 31st, inside the Queens Museum, we are doing a huge food event called uh, a Midsummer Night's Dream, uh, I'm sorry, a Midsummer Night's Feast, a celebration of food, art, and cinema. It's inside the Queens Museum. We have about 20 food vendors from around New York City selling their food. There's a small entry fee to get in. The plates are all under $10. The gallery is completely open. Uh, the whole museum, uh, the, all the galleries in the museum are open. Uh, so for guests to go and peruse the artwork, the uh, famous New York City panorama. We will be playing trailers for the films in the museum uh, theater, uh, and that will be on, uh, on loop. Uh, we'll have um, uh, tickets will be sold to the films at this event as well. We'll have a ticket booth to buy uh, uh, films. We'll, we'll have the programs available so people can see what's going on throughout the whole 10 days, and uh, what else will be there? Uh, yeah, that's, oh, we'll have, a, you know, we'll have the red carpet, separate people will be able to take their photos, so it's going to be a great night, it's going to be a, a DJ, it's going to be music, food, art, movies, it's, it's going to be, a, it's, really, it's, it's really an event for everybody. Sounds awesome. Um, is the horror <laughs> film sicker than the human centipede? You know, it is. It, it is. is. I, I, I personally was not that disturbed, as, as I know, and that even saying that doesn't even sound right. It, like, I got a kick out of watching Human Centipede. Like, I watched it, and, and Human Centipede actually made me laugh. And I've seen all three, all three of them. Um, and, and, you know, it, it was so... The thing with Human Centipede, it was so surreal yeah. that, yes, it's sick, but because it's so surreal, it just... It, it is, there, there was an element of, 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 
uh, of comicness. Uh, it was, yeah, it was yeah. a comical I, element to it. I, I follow you um, absolutely. So, so, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of people can't. You know, I've I've grown up with horror, so I could see it, and I've seen like I used to, I grew up with all the faces of death movies and all that stuff. So, and I'm a big horror fan. But um, Me too. but this movie definitely it's it's so disturbing because of its realistic portrayal of uh, there's people being tortured and killed. And it is very, very well done. The actors are phenomenal. The, the special effects are incredible. And it's very realistic. And it is very disturbing. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and there's, there's, no, there's no surreal element about it. Like, like it's, it's the kind of thing you look at and it's like, wow, this, this actually can really happen. And, uh, and that's kind of what makes the movie so disturbing. Wow, sounds great. And Jason, please tell people uh, any social media websites, how they could buy tickets and all of that. Oh, good stuff. absolutely. You could so you could go to our website, which is www.qgardens. That's K E W, not the letter Q. K E W Gardens uh, Festival of Cinema dot org. Um, you could uh, you can find our whole program is available for upload. You could uh, or for download rather. Um, you could download a whole program there. You can uh, you can check out the programming There's a, on the navigation bar. You can look films by the titles, or you can search uh, by what's playing on each day. You could also find this on Eventbrite. If you go to Eventbrite.com and you just type in the search engine "Two Gardens Festival of Cinema," you will see all our events come up, including the Midsummer Night Feast that is uh, that's coming this Tuesday. Um, and as far as social media, you can find us using the hashtag KGFC. Film Fest uh, across all major platforms. We are on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. So be sure to follow us, like us, and, and send us a message and wish us luck and help. Buy a ticket and come on out. There you go. And uh, yours truly is the associate producer on The Wrestler and the new documentary 350 Days starring Brad Hart. And as somebody involved deeply in film, I just want to tell all my viewers oh, and wow. listeners. Yes, Bret Hart, that's right. And please, folks, come out and support Independent Cinema, Q Gardens Festival of Cinema, Jason Simba, the founder and executive director. And Jason, when you have more time to breathe, please come down to the studio and uh, we'll talk more. Absolutely. I, I hope you guys are able to come out to the festival. It's going to be a good time. Oh, absolutely. I plan on it. I'm a, I'm a Queens resident. I, I absolutely good. Good, good, good. I'll see you there. Okay, thank you so much, Jason. And my apologies again thank for you. the uh, tech issues. That's, that's okay. I know all about it. Trust me, I've had my share of technical difficulties, so I know all about it. Uh, it uh, yeah, we, <laughs> you know it happened. We, we, we had it with a live band in studio, so it was a full day. But thank you so much for your patience. Wow. <laughs> all right, well, thank it. you. Thanks for reaching out. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, I'll, I'll head into the studio once the festival manages over, give you, you know, the rundown of how everything went. And, uh, and I hope to see you at the festival. Absolutely. Thank you. Jason Simba, founder and executive director, Q Gardens Festival of Cinema. We want to thank Robin Channing and Erica A. as well, and uh, Shy Perry and Bill Hallamad Perry and uh, Jim Savalli, uh, above and beyond the call of duty. Uh, what a day. What a day. And um, again, you know, I was glad to uh, your friend. Yeah, um, and I just want to uh, once again dedicate the show to the memory of Nikolai Volkov, who was a dear friend. And uh, when my mother died, Nikolai called and um, you know really helped boost my spirits. Uh, a childhood hero and a friend. So uh, we lost another one, another great one, and maybe uh, we'll do another two-hour depressing tribute show <laughs> to Nikolai in a few weeks. Wow. We'll invite Robin Channing. He's a wrestling fan. All right. And that'll about do it. J Jim's going to go home and collapse. It's been a <laughs> long, Thank stressful you day. Nice Thank you, us. Erica. Thank you, Robin. We're, everybody's troopers. We've been here 27 hours oh, already. <laughs> anyway, that'll about wrap it up. Thanks, gang. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>
I guess you would have heard someone. No one's complained, but huh? no one's complained about that show. I guess show. it would be okay. Somebody would have noticed if we guessed Trying to think who, uh, yeah, we had some good sh big shows yesterday. They would have known. What's today? No, we had no, we had no shows yesterday. Something must have happened between Thursday and today that reset my computer because I basically had to go in and reset everything. So That's why I drove didn't work. like two hours and the show didn't work? Oh. You'd have to put it like that.